All right, so welcome everyone. Thank you for joining on uh, today's workshop. Our weekly workshops takes place every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 10 a.m. Pacific, where we cover a different topic each week. You can register for our weekly workshops and other events through our um, website uh, under the events tab. You can also use the link displayed on the screen above. Uh, we do post a list of all of our topics in advance, so you have the option to sign up for multiple sessions at once. I encourage you to join as many sessions as possible, whether it is as a refresher or to learn tips and tricks on how to make the most of BirdView for your project management needs. With each session, uh, we start with a demo on the topic that we are covering and then allocate the last 10 minutes to review uh, any questions that you may have. So please feel free to send in your questions in the Q&A chat box. So today's workshop is how we can collaborate uh, with team within BirdView. So this is beneficial for all the users, irrespective of their access level. Um, today's agenda, uh, we're going to cover how teams can collaborate uh, using messages, mentions, how to attach files, um, share files uh, with other team members, annotate images on BirdView, uh, requesting approvals, as well as follow um, uh, the difference between following and assigning tasks, notification rules, and lastly, uh, our newly introduced feature, uh, which is checklist. And then we'll cover the questions and then uh, quickly review the upcoming webinar topics uh, for your information. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up um, a mock instance here where I have prepared a topic for you, um, uh, a fake project really. Um, so here we've got a project with different tasks, um, subtasks, and we have assigned people. So there are multiple ways in which um, users can interact with each other, right? They, they can use emails, um, chat messages, uh, whether it's Teams, Slack, Zoom, et cetera. But how do we maintain um, the communication within BirdView so that way you don't have to go in multiple different apps to get the information that you need on specific projects and tasks? So at the project level, as well as at the task level, when you click in the task details, we have a collaboration board right at the very bottom of the screen here. This is where BirdView allows you to send messages, share updates on projects, attach files, and request approvals. So this is available at both project level as well as task or activity levels. So as you can see, um, if I go here um, and click on a uh, task, uh, you can see there's already a message. So as an example, let's go back to uh, the main uh, project. And let's say um, we're gonna start typing uh, this project is for client ABC and uh, needs free planning call, right? So I can share, I can type that message and I can simply click send. So what it does is anytime I have any update regarding my project or my activities, I can go into the details and I can type those in here so that the system records the history. Because often what happens is, let's say your team is changing and multiple people are working on uh, projects or they're moving on from one project to another. This is a one-stop shop for everyone um, and it maintains the authenticity of the information that's uh, shared um, and gives you like a start to finish uh, details of the project, um, et cetera. So next is mentions. Um, when we have multiple users um, at the task or project levels, um, when we create type of message and send it, it's gonna get sent to everybody who is assigned to that activity. However, if I use at mention here, so let's say in this case, um, these are my project members and I want to interact with um, this individual Kavya and I'm going to say, uh, can you please confirm 
the deadline. Uh, deadline. And I say sent. Or sent. So what's going to happen is Kavya is going to get an email as well as a notification in her center saying that Kavya, you have been mentioned in a project, in a task, right? So as an example, um, uh, let's go into uh, this here. All right. So let's say um, Benjamin, who's also another project member here, they have mentioned me. Uh, that's saying that the budget is ready for review. So how do I know that Benjamin has mentioned me? I can simply look at the top ribbon here where we have notifications and you'll notice that there's a one, which means that I have one new notification. So when I click on that, I will see that Benjamin has mentioned me on the project Falcon Topography Solutions for planning and budgeting and has said budget is ready for review. So this is a good place for me to view anytime someone has mentioned me um, uh, directly. So this way, it is a very, very targeted um, notification uh, and message uh, for you. So now let's say that I've clicked on it um, and I've reviewed this. Okay, this is great. You know, um, I've understood it's ready for review. I've done my review and we're golden. So I no longer need this notification. So what I can do is I can hover over uh, the notification and towards the right side, it says more actions. I can simply click on it and say archive. Because now all of uh, I've already taken care of the uh, message that was shared with me. I no longer need this notification so that it can go in the back end of the system. Um, in this case, I'm just going to quickly click on archive all. So it automatically takes all those notifications and set it to archive. This way, all the historical da data ha is captured in the archive as well as stream and Anytime you have new notifications that require your attention, it is going to appear in the inbox. Ideally, we want to make sure that the notification inbox is always clean and up to date so that um, you, know, you don't miss out on any uh, thing that is urgent or important uh, that requires your attention. So we've gone over messages and mentions. Uh, let's talk about attaching files. So um, you can attach files both at the project and activity level. Um, in this case, let's uh, click on uh, topography survey here and details. So if I want to add a file here, I can simply click on the collaboration board and I can click on attach file and it will open up a new dialog box for me. And here I can choose um, the file that I need. So in this case, I'm going to say the topographical survey and attach and hit send. So now you can see that the image has been shared um, uh, at the project at the activity level here. And anybody um, who is a member of this activity, they will get a notification that something uh, was updated here. You can... Uh, pretty much add any type of file. Uh, you can add a Word document, PDF, um, images, uh, PowerPoint presentations, um, et cetera, you name it, and they can be attached here. However, anytime you attach a, a PDF or a Word document, anytime you click on it, it's going to be a downloadable file. So let's say, um, I think it was in here, uh, no, proposal. So in proposal, we have a sample document, right? So if I click on the document here, you will notice that it was downloaded um, and I can click on it to open the file. Once the file is revised, you can resave the file and it will keep the authenticity um, and the copy of the file in the, um, in the bird view. So let's go back to the survey here and let's talk about images and annotations. So I can click on the image and here you can see that um, I can click anywhere and say, uh, please look in detail as an example and say comment. Um, 
what happens if let's say if anybody else is also annotating the image it will show up live so um let's quickly uh let's quickly take a look at that so i'm going to go into a different account and um and i'll do another uh, annotation there so i'm gonna oops And let's go here and I'm going to log in as someone else. So in this case, um, I will look at the file, which is site visits, topographical survey, and uh, some details here. Where did that file go? Oh, I'm so sorry. Just give me a second here. Maybe my system didn't... Uh... Let's go back here and do that quickly. I should have probably remembered where I saved it. Um, yes. It is in here. Um, so anyway, um, I can click on it and the annotations as other people are also annotating the image, uh, they will be able to see the live update um, on the right panel here and you can uh, coordinate and collaborate live. So that ability is only available for images. So whether it is a snapshot or um, it is a, uh, you know, uh, any type of image, um, you can upload that in uh, project activities or at the project level. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about uh, approvals, right? So um, annotations and approvals. So we have uh, an approval request here. So anytime uh, someone requests an approval, you will get a notification. So in this case, Benjamin has requested the approval for sample documentation. So I can go into, uh, if you look at the top right corner again, uh, there's a tab that says approval requests and it has a one, meaning that I have one pending approval request that needs my attention. So I'm gonna click on that. And here you'll see um, Benjamin has sent a re uh, approval request as well as it has my initial, however, it is grayed out. When this dot is gray, it means that the uh, approval request is still pending. So I can click on it. It will take me directly to the activity that is uh, of interest. And here I can click on the document. It will download. I can review it and I can either say approve or reject. So let's say for the purposes of this demo, uh, we're going to approve uh, this request. So now you notice that the in progress line item has automatically been moved into history. And the moment uh, approval is done, um, my initial shows green, which means it's approved. If it was rejected, it would highlight as red. So now Benjamin would have gotten a notification saying that your approval request has been approved. Please continue working on. Um, he can continue working on um, his task. So let's talk about following versus assigning, um, oops, following versus assigning activities. So anytime uh, you are assigned to a task, you're automatically following the task as well, right? And how do you know if you're following a task? Um, in the project or the uh, activity details, you will see this little Wi-Fi icon. That means uh, if it's blue, that means you're following it. If you click on it, it will be gray. So if you hover, it will also tell you if you are following or if you're unfollowing, right? So following um, means anytime there's a change in activity date, um, uh, task, timeline, uh, estimated hours, any type of communication, status updates that are taking place, you will be able to, you'll get those notifications. Um, now, let's say 
uh, I'm looking at QA analysis, right? So QA analysis, we know Kavya is a um, Kavya is an assignee. Um, however, I'm not assigned to it. So as a non-project member, like let's say uh, I'm not the project manager, um, uh, I can go into here and I can say I'm going. I want to follow this activity because it's of my interest, um, even though I'm not assigned to it, right? So how you can manage the types of notifications um, you're going to get if you're following a activity. So you can simply click on your account, your uh, initials at the bottom left corner and go into my settings. In my settings under notifications center, uh, let me fix this first quickly because I have brilliantly enabled, uh, disabled the notifications. Now I can get that. Um, all right, so we go back into my settings, notifications, and now you'll see that anytime you're following, so as a follower, the types of notifications you want to receive. So this is very personalized to your preference. Anytime uh, a project, uh, sorry, an activities, activity is added to a project that you are a part of, you want to be notified. Anytime dates are changing, you want to be notified if that is relevant to you. Status updates, messages and files, you definitely want to be sure that you want to uh, get notifications as a follower. And expense updates, it may or may not be uh, of relevance to you unless, of course, you have the capability to review, um, uh, to access the uh, billing information for projects. So as a follower, uh, this is where you can identify the types of notifications you want to receive via email. Uh, if you're following, uh, you will um, you'll get notifications in your uh, notification center as well, provided that you have um, defined those parameters in the system. Uh, checklists. So let's talk about uh, checklist, which is our newest and coolest feature. So let's say uh, you're a, you know, a surveyor and you want to be sure that you have checked off every single thing that you need to take care of when you're out on the site, right? So before, um, what you would do is you would probably go and create uh, multiple subtasks or child's tasks to make sure all those information, all that information is captured. However, with the introduction of checklist, now you can see it all in the project or the task details section. So how do you um, add a checklist item? Simply click on where it says add checklist item or use control V to paste a list of these items. So I'm simply gonna click and say testing checklist and hit enter. So when you hit enter, it will automatically take you to a new line. Um, but if you click outside, um, that means that is pretty much saved. So you can use it for multiple, multiple purposes. You can use these if, let's say, you have internal or external team meetings and you want, um, you know, you want to make sure that you have captured all of the points that you want to cover during that meeting. You can use checklist 100%. Um, you know, if, let's say, you're going out to, on a survey or you have a you know, um, external event or even internal event, or if let's say you have a um, uh, a budget that you're working on or a proposal that you're working on, you need certain list of items so you don't have to remember it every single time to make sure you haven't missed anything, checklist will come in handy for you. So let's say, you know, um, I have completed one of the tasks in the checklist. Um, so I can click there and it will you'll notice that it's automatically crossed out, meaning that item in the checklist has been taken care of. So checklist is permission driven. Um, so as a uh, project manager, you are able to access uh, the checklist through and through and you can edit it um, and check it and so on. However, if you are a collaborator, you only have read only permissions. Um, so we are working on that. Um, that will be uh, in the, upcoming future um, to add more permissions so that there's more flexibility in terms of the usability of the checklist. But right now, as an administrator or as a project manager, uh, you have um, 
full um, um, ability to do, you know, add checklist, edit checklist, uh, delete a checklist and so on. Whereas as a collaborator, as a user uh, with limited permissions, they uh, can view these checklist items. So these, this is all we have for today. Uh, are there any questions? And I see there's one. Can you rearrange the checklist order without deleting and adding? So right now, um, you can't. Uh, oh, sorry, something changed. I think two of, you can combine them, but uh, it does not look very good. But right now you can't change the order. Um, it will autom it will just add an item to this uh, previous checklist. Uh, but again, that is something in the horizon um, and that will be um, taken care of in the upcoming um, items in the roadmap. But uh, yeah, right now, uh, if you want to rearrange it, I would recommend deleting um, a line item and then just adding it as needed. So again, um, if let's say that is of concern, I would highly recommend that you maybe create a checklist on a Word document um, or in Excel somewhere first. And then once you have uh, the correct order, you can simply copy and paste it here um, or anywhere. Um, seriously, like uh, let's do a quick um, review here. What I would do is um, let's say I'm going to add a couple more items. All right, let's take this view out. So we're gonna say testing uh, checklist one. Let's say, oops, two and three. So I'm going to copy these and then I'm gonna, oops, go here and I'll paste it, right? So if let's say um, you can literally type it anywhere, you can type it on, um, Teams, if let's say that's accessible to you, uh, Excel or like a Word document that you have, uh, you can simply add those items, configure it, uh, the order, and then you can simply copy and paste it here. So that's one way I would um, work around that issue. So yes, uh, this is a checklist and team collaboration for you. Um, I know in the past there were a um, few inquiries where People weren't 100% sure how they can maximize the uh, utilization of these uh, techniques, but they are there for your use and for your benefit. Um, so anytime, you know, you're adding messages, uh, any updates to the project, please uh, feel free to update that on the on the onboard view at the project or task level itself, uh, because it is good for a continuity and it's a one-stop shop to get all your answers and updates related to a project. All right, um, are there any other questions? Okay, uh, so if there are none, uh, then let's talk about the upcoming workshops. So on October 10th, we are going to cover custom formula fields. Uh, again, that's a new image, as well as job role grouping. Um, that is something new that we have uh, introduced in our resource planning module. On October 17th, we've got portfolio management. Um, and this is where we're going to cover how to maximize and effectively use portfolios within BirdView uh, to group your projects um, in, uh, in a more efficient way. On October 23, uh, 25th, we have our monthly webinar, which is a Wednesday at 1 p.m. Uh, this is where we're going to cover advanced reporting, which is business intelligence reports uh, that we have uh, in the system, as well as review uh, some of the new reports that we have been working tirelessly uh, to improve your um, project analysis, um, for your project analysis and decision making. Oh, I see there's one more uh, question. So when you annotate an image, Am I correct in thinking that the comments won't stay with the image when downloaded? Um, all right, so let's take a look at that quickly. Um, so, uh, all right, so if I click here, uh, we can see that we have a uh, comment here. 
and annotation. So let's go back and I'm going to say, uh, let's go back. Can I, sorry, it's a little bright out here, but um, let's go. So this can't, um, oh, click here. All right, so there we go. So that's downloaded. And if I click there, uh, yes, here we go. So when you download the image, you are not going to see any annotations or comments. You're just going to see uh, the image as is. So uh, there you go. Like the annotations will just stay on board view, not in the downloaded image. Excellent. Perfect. Uh, I think that's the only other question that I had here. And yeah, so um, again, just to quickly reiterate, um, on October 10th, we're going over custom formulas and job role grouping. October 17th, uh, portfolio management. And then on October 25th, we've got advanced reporting for business intelligence. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining in today's session. I really hope that you found this session um, helpful. Um, we do welcome all your questions, uh, suggestions, and recommendations for a future topic. If let's say there's something that you want to want us to cover, please feel free to uh, send in a request, and I will be happy to uh, cover those topics in the upcoming um, sessions. So you can send those requests to success at birdviewpsa.com as you see it on the screen, and uh, we'll take it from there. Thanks so much. Uh, I hope everyone has a great day and uh, have a good week. See you all next week.